joined our team about three years ago or so after spending some time at the University of Maryland. And he's going to describe a little bit about our experience using ECMO uh, as a bridge to other advanced heart therapies. And as he's walking the podium, I'm going to tell you a bit about our ECMO program. It started out of necessity, and uh, it, it has become a vital tool for us uh, for the salvage care of a lot of patients, both uh, pre transplant, pre bad, and post open heart surgery. So, Okay, so I'm going to be speaking about the extracorporeal membrane oxygenation for the treatment of cardiogenic shock. So I'd like to start with a uh, brief case presentation. This was a 44-year-old gentleman that was known to our uh, medical center but presented with acute exacerbation of his pre-existing ischemic cardiomyopathy. His acute heart failure. He was taken originally to the cath lab and into a little pump placement as well as right heart catheterization. However, shortly after the start of the procedure, he suffered a cardiac arrest. And I came to find uh, the patient in full, uh, receiving full CPR and in a full cardiac arrest. So kind of by segue, Dr. Heimanson just convinced you that you're never too old for heart surgery. I'm going to try to convince you that you're never too dead for heart surgery. <laughs> <laughs> so extracorporeal membrane oxygenation is really the most basic form of cardiopulmonary support it, in the modern era of ventricular assist devices. It really is the most simplistic form of cardiac support. However, it's also the most complete form of cardiopulmonary support. It allows you to capture the entire uh, cardiac circulation as well as control the pulmonary uh, circulation as well. I'm going to res restrict our discussion this afternoon to just veno arterial ECMO as uh, in contrast to veno venous ECMO, which is really used mainly for pulmonary support. So the basic structure of adult ECMO is that you take deoxygenated blood from the right atrium, either via a peripheral vein or centrally from the right atrium, pass it through the ECMO circuit, return the oxygenated blood back via either a peripheral artery from the femoral artery or directly via the aorta, and thus you're able to achieve complete cardiopulmonary bypass and complete, by definition, that complete biventricular support. The history of uh, adult ECMO really dates back to the development of cardiopulmonary bypass. And the first uh, human use of cardiopulmonary bypass in April uh, 1951 by uh, Dr. Clarence Dennis at the University of Minnesota, and then as Dr. Heimerson mentioned, the first successful use in humans in May of 1953 by Dr. John Deere. There has been evolution of the use of cardiopulmonary bypass, but the biggest step forward really was in the 1960s with the development of membrane oxygen. So the crux of ECMO really is the oxygenator. And as I mentioned, the original uh, development was using a bubble oxygenator. And this is kind of a representative schematic of how the bubble oxygenator worked. It looked very similar. It works very similarly to the little oxygenator thing that you have in the aquarium. It sits in the blood, and there's a direct interface between the gas and the blood. And you oxygenate the blood, and you take the CO2 out of the blood by this direct interface. The big step forward was the development of membrane oxygenators in the 1960s. The advantage of these is that you were able to increase the surface area of blood exposed to oxygen in a major way by having these membranes through the oxygenator canister. The other advantage is that there's no direct blood to gas interface, thus there's far less blood trauma, and there's a far tighter control of the CO2 used with a membrane oxygenator as opposed to historical blood oxygen, uh, mobile oxygen. The most common question I've asked is, what's the difference between ECMO and bypass? Did you put the person on ECMO or did you put them on bypass? Well, the reality is that there is no difference. Cardiopulmonary bypass and ECMO are effectively the same thing. So this really shows the uh, cardiopulmonary bypass circuit that we use every day in the operating room. And here's the adult ECMO circuit. 
So what you see is that there's a pump here in the uh, critical component bypass machine. Here's the same, not the same pump, but the equivalent pump in the ECMO circuit. There's an oxygenator it's here in the critical component bypass machine, here in the ECMO circuit, and that ultimately results in complete critical component support. Now the difference is that the adult uh, bypass machine does have to carry on other the reservoirs or suction canisters that we need for heart surgery, which you really don't need in adult ECMO. So this is it's termed a closed system because there's no additional inputs to this system. It's completely closed. Blood comes in from the vein, goes out to an artery. There's no other inputs into this circuit. This is an open system that's used for surgery, so there's other inputs. There's suction cancer and everything else that we use during surgery. But functionally, they do the exact same thing. So what are the indications? Right now, the indications are really impending doom. Uh, post cardiotomy, acute infarct, decompensated heart failure, but ultimately all unrecoverable cardiogenic shock is the uh, ultimate common denominator. Historically, uh, ECMO was first used for pulmonary support in the 1970s for a patient with uh, traumatic lung injury or ARDS. Interestingly, that's now still one of the biggest areas that uh, adult ECMO is starting to evolve into is for the treatment of ARDS. The advantages of using ECMO in uh, adult patients with cardiogenic shock is that it allows very rapid initiation or restoration of perfusion because we can do this fairly expeditiously through the uh, femoral artery and vein. It provides you complete biventricular support. So unlike the other VADs that we use, which are predominantly left side support, this allows you to complete, excuse me, to achieve complete biventricular support. And importantly, it also allows you to have pulmonary support. Most of these patients that are in cardiogenic shock will have pulmonary edema resulting from their left side of failure. A LVAD would not solve that problem. They still would be in pulmonary edema and would still suffer from inability to oxygenate. ECMO allows for complete cardiopulmonary bypass, so their pulmonary edema is no longer an issue. So what are the outcomes with adult ECMO? Well, the outcomes, the reality is, are not great. Um, one of the best studies done uh, to date was a study um, by the Cleveland Clinic looking at 202 patients from 1992 to 1999 uh, treated with uh, adult ethanol for cardiogenic shock. Of those patients, 53% of them was, were post-cardiotomy patients. 23 patients were successfully bridged off of uh, ethanol. 35% were weaned. But the 30-day mortality was 62%. What is important is I'll kind of keep reiterating throughout this talk is that ECMO really is a bridge. So this 53% post-cardiotomy is really, in my opinion, the biggest predictor of why these results were mediocre at best. Separate studies that have looked at survival statistics for post-cardiotomy ECMO, the average survival of uh, post-cardiotomy ECMO is about 10% to hospital discharge. So if you tease this group out, and just eliminate them from your analysis, you'll actually have far better results. A couple of important things about this study is the date, 1992 to 1999, this predated the smaller uh, ventricular assist devices that we currently use. All of the patients that were bridged in this group received the larger heart rate XDE, which really is now a historical pump. Um, we haven't used it in many years now. Additionally, none of these patients have left particular venting performed during their uh, ECMO run. We'll get to that a little later in the talk. All of these are kind of relevant factors in the outcomes and in the conduct of the ECMO. But as you see, not only was there, uh, the survival mediocre, but the morbidity was substantial. 40% of patients uh, went on to require dialysis, and a third of patients had permanent neurological. So to try to evolve to the uh, improving the outcomes with uh, adult ECMO, there have been improvements in the design of the ECMO circuit. One of the biggest was the improvement in the pump design. The original